Hi everybody. Now in this video, we are going to discuss about the non-communicable diseases. Non-communicable diseases. So we already completed in the previous videos about the communicable diseases. So you have some understanding about the communicable diseases. So what are communicable diseases? The diseases which will be spreading from one person to another person by various ways are called as what communicable diseases. But here we are going to now discuss or start with the non-communicable diseases. So these are a group of diseases which will not spread from one person to another person. These are a group of diseases which will not spread from one person to another person. They are confined to one particular person only. They are confined to one particular person only. So if you are coming across the word non-communicable diseases, the first thing that you have to remember is that these diseases are not going to spread from one person to another person. Some of the important diseases which we are going to be, which we are going to discuss now are described here. The first and the very important disease is the diabetes mellitus. Okay, the first disease is diabetes mellitus. This is coming under what now? Non-communicable diseases. So, diabetes mellitus is also known as the hyperglycemia. Okay, this is also known as the hyperglycemia. Okay, this is another name that is given for the diabetes mellitus. This is the first disease. And the second one is cardiovascular diseases that are related with the heart. That are related with the heart. Cardiovascular diseases. And the third one is stroke. Most of them, okay, in the old age or in the middle age, they will be suffering with this uh, disease, okay, which are coming up as what non communicable diseases, which we are calling it as stroke. But otherwise, this is cerebrovascular accident. Cerebrovascular accident. This is called as cerebrovascular accident or otherwise this is also known as in short CVA okay CVA this is also known as CVA and the next one is arthritis okay arthritis this this also will not spread from one person to another person or otherwise this disease known as arthritis is also known as what commonly aching joints okay aching joints means painful joints now here and the last and the very important and the dreadful disease that is called as what Cancer, okay, cancer. So these are all the different types of diseases which we are going to discuss under non-communicable diseases. So here we will be talking about the non-communicable diseases and the point that we have to keep in mind is that these disease will not spread from one person to another person. These disease will not spread from one person to another person. So first we are going to discuss about the diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus. Now, the first one, diabetes mellitus, which we are also calling, calling it as what? Hyperglycemia, okay? Hyperglycemia. So, if you are looking at this, this is the most common endocrine disorder. Please remember that. This is the most common endocrine disorder, okay? Most common endocrine disorder, okay? Most common endocrine disorder of the pancreas, okay? Disorder of pancreas okay of pancreas which is which means that it is related with what now something related with the pancreas and here when we talk about this particular disease the, the very first thing that we have to remember is that this is uh, regarding with the glucose levels in the blood okay it is regarding with the glucose levels in the blood now this glucose level should be maintained in a certain state means it should be well balanced the glucose that is there obtained from the food that we take should be in a balanced state in the blood because blood will be carrying this glucose to all the cells or tissues in our body in certain quantity required quantity so glucose levels should not increase nor also should not decrease that is very important so then what is the connection with the glucose and the pancreas here, if you are looking at the pancreas, which is doing dual function, this pancreas, as you already know, that it will be performing as it is a it is categorized under endocrine gland and also exocrine gland, endocrine gland and also exocrine gland. So here, first let us say that let us understand that this pancreas, okay, this pancreas is an endocrine gland, okay, pancreas is an endocrine gland. So when we are saying that pancreas is an endocrine gland now let us remember that there are two important okay cells that are there present in the pancreas of course there are three but based on this topic 
we are going to discuss about two cells that are related with the increase and decrease levels of blood glucose okay blood glucose so what are those cells which are they present in the pancreas they are called as alpha cells okay they are called as alpha cells and also other type of cells are called as beta cells alpha cells and beta cells now these two cells which are there as clusters in the pancreas are responsible in controlling the amount of glucose indirectly indirectly means indirectly means what now what is the function of alpha cells and beta cells here if you are looking at the alpha cells if you are looking at the alpha cells they are responsible for producing one hormone called as glucagon they are responsible for producing a hormone called as glucagon please remember pancreas is producing now hormones that's why we said that pancreas is what it is an endocrine gland we are saying now pancreas which is having the alpha cells are responsible for what producing a hormone called as glucagon at the same time if you are looking at the beta cells present in the pancreas here these beta cells are responsible for producing another hormone called as insulin okay insulin now you can understand now you can guess as soon as you come across this word insulin because most of the most of us will come across this word insulin okay insulin now here if you are looking at these now alpha cells and beta cells where are they present present in the pancreas what is the responsibility of what is the function of these cells alpha cells are responsible in producing a hormone called as glucagon beta cells are responsible in producing a hormone called as insulin now let us see in simple let us see and understand in simple as we are proceeding with this uh, called this is called as diabetes mellitus alpha cells are producing glucagon as we said beta cells are producing insulin now when we take diet rich in excess of glucose what will happen to this glucose now what will happen to the glucose when we take glucose into the body here the required amount of glucose will be supplied to all the cells okay the necessary amount of glucose required for all the cells will be supplied to the blood but most of that excess glucose will be remaining in the blood that is dangerous should not be there so here what happens is that glucose actually it will be converted okay it will be converted into an insoluble product called as glycogen okay called as glycogen glucose is converted into glycogen remember it is not all the glucose we are talking about that excess of glucose that is taken into our body that excess of glucose will be converted into what glycogen and this glycogen is insoluble product whereas glucose is soluble okay remember that this is a soluble and here this is insoluble we should remember okay soluble and insoluble we are saying now how this conversion is taking place in the body and where this is present which is insoluble glucose okay will be converted into glycogen in the presence of a hormone called as the glucagon it is in the presence of a hormone called as glucagon so we have to remember this okay we have to remember this sorry please check here the glucose is converted into glycogen in the presence of insulin okay it is in the presence of insulin not glucagon okay it is in the presence of insulin okay glucose is converted into glycogen in the presence of insulin in the presence of insulin please remember that okay please remember that this hormone is very important one and now from where this insulin is released it is released from the pancreas it is released from the pancreas which cells present in the pancreas are responsible for re releasing this insulin it is the beta cells okay it is the beta cells okay beta cells will be releasing the insulin and insulin will be coming out from the pancreas and it will be reaching to the liver inside the liver glucose is converted into glycogen glucose is converted into glycogen now glycogen which is insoluble glycogen which is insoluble will be stored in the liver in the form, in the insoluble form please remember that okay in the liver what is stored glycogen okay which is insoluble product will be there present in the 
liver okay will be there present in the liver so now as the time passes by suddenly the levels of glucose if they are falling immediately again now the pancreas will be again releasing another hormone called as what glucagon okay they will be releasing another hormone called as glucagon so what is the function of this glucagon now the glucagon which is released from from the pancreas reaches the liver reaches the liver and after reaching the liver inside the liver what is there glycogen is there now this glycogen again okay it is again converted back into glucose this is brought by a hormone called as what glucagon okay glucagon this is the basic function okay this is the basic function that is done are under the control of two hormones called as insulin and glucagon produced by the pancreas produced by the pancreas but now we have to be we have to understand now the actual word or the disease called as what diabetes mellitus which we are also calling it as what hyperglycemia so now let us understand what is this diabetes mellitus or otherwise hyperglycemia now diabetes mellitus is recognized to exist in two forms okay it is recognized that it is existing in two forms so what are those two forms the first form of diabetes mellitus is insulin dependent insulin dependent diabetes mellitus insulin dependent diabetes mellitus okay this is the first type of diabetes mellitus okay diabetes mellitus okay insulin dependent diabetes mellitus in short we can we can call this as uh, i d d m okay insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and the second one okay the second one is called as non insulin okay non insulin dependent okay non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus okay non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus this is the second type of diabetes mellitus so in short we can call this as niddm okay niddm which means non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus so we have to remember that now it is recognized that diabetes mellitus is existing in two forms one is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and the other one is non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus now if you are looking at the so i mean that the insulin dependent diabetes mellitus okay insulin dependent diabetes mellitus is caused due to the failure okay due to the failure of beta cells okay due to the failure of beta cells present in what the pancreas so these cells will be not functioning properly which are there present in the pancreas so here due to the due to the failure of beta cells but from the present in the pancreas they cannot produce sufficient amount of what insulin sufficient amount of insulin okay this is the most important thing that we have to remember when beta cells fail then it will be reflecting on what the production of insulin because these are the ones which are responsible beta cells are the ones responsible for producing what insulin so there will be fall in the production of insulin or secretion of insulin will be decreased okay insulin will be decreased and this is because of what auto immune response this is because of auto immune response okay auto immune response you can say that why there is failure of beta cells it is nothing but what it is an auto immune response please remember this okay please remember that is what called as auto immune response so what is the next one non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus how this disease or how this disorder is caused which is related with the glucose levels in the blood so this disorder is caused due to the failure okay it is caused due to the failure of insulin okay failure of insulin to facilitate to help in or to enhance the absorption of 
the glucose by the cells. So here now we have to remember that insulin is responsible to help in the movement of glucose into the cells. To the move for the help, it helps in movement of glucose into the cells. That's what we have to remember. Okay, we have to remember. So let us remember that failure of insulin to facilitate, okay, to facilitate the movement, okay, to facilitate the movement of glucose, okay, movement of glucose into the cells, okay, into the cells, okay, will lead to a disorder called as what? Non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. Here two key points we have to remember. Insulin dependent diabetes mellitus is caused due to the failure of what? Beta cells. Please remember. It is due to the failure of beta cells. The disease that is caused is what? Insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. If these cells are failed, if they are not, they are responsible for what? To secrete insulin. So, failure of beta cells can lead to what? Insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. Next one is what? Non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. Insulin is produced, but that amount of insulin that is produced by beta cells are failed to facilitate the movement of glucose into the cells. Insulin is there, but this insulin is not able to facilitate the movement of glucose into the cells. So that is called as what? Non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. In this, in the both the disorders, in these both disorders, we have to remember that blood glucose levels will be increasing. Okay, blood glucose levels are elevated than normal range. Blood glucose levels are elevated than the normal range. Than the normal range in both the cases. That is another point we have to remember. Both in insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus okay in both these disorders it is leading to the increase in blood glucose levels than the normal range than the normal range so what we discussed now we said that diabetes mellitus is existing in two forms okay it is recognized that it is existing in two forms one is what we say insulin dependent diabetes mellitus we said and the next one what we said non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus so here if you are looking at these two disorders which are coming under as one called as diabetes mellitus in both the cases what is happening blood glucose levels are increasing okay blood glucose levels are increasing okay blood glucose levels there is increase in blood glucose levels than the normal range that's what is very important here okay blood glucose levels will be increasing than the normal range what happens when the blood glucose levels increase than the normal range here excess of glucose that is there present in the blood will be excreted out through the urine okay through the urine there will be excess amount the excess amount of uh, glucose will be excreted through the urine which means in simple let us say that the urine will be consisting of what now it will be consisting of more amount of glucose okay it will be consisting of more amount of glucose why it may be because of the failure of the beta cells or it may be because of the failure of what insulin in both the cases what is happening there is increasing blood glucose level but this blood our blood should not have excess of glucose than the normal range so what how the body will try to now manage or balance it will excrete the excess of glucose through urine but we know the formation of urine or elimination or excretion of urine is taking place by the excretory system comprising of two kidneys so when the excess of glucose is passing through the kidneys okay is passing through the kidneys when excess of glucose is passing through the kidneys the concentration of glucose is more the concentration of glucose is more inside the kidneys the concentration of glucose should not increase should not 
increase so that's why what happens is that when urine is consisting of excess of glucose along with this glucose to dilute this glucose there will be also water in excess that will be removed outside or excreted outside so remember here excess of glucose is excreted through the urine which is formed with the help of our kidneys but the concentration of glucose should not increase okay it can also damage the kidneys that's why when there is excess of glucose it will be diluted with the water so here simple point is that when the excess of glucose is eliminated it is also followed by what water means if body is losing that excess glucose body will also lose excess of water in the form of urine in the form of urine so a diabetic patient will be going for frequent urination which is sorry a diabetic patient will be releasing or excreting excess of glucose with more water that's why we should remember that if a person is suffering with diabetes mellitus if a person is suffering with diabetes mellitus they will be going for frequent drinking water okay it is observed that they will be going for frequent drinking water okay they continuously drink water okay they continuously drink water because they feel thirsty okay they feel more thirsty it's all because of what the body is losing more water why the body is losing more water it's because there is excess of glucose that is excreted through the urine in order to dilute this glucose in the urine in the kidneys what is being added so body is getting now dehydrated so the body will get dehydrated so here is another word that we have to remember that a patient or a person who is suffering with diabetes mellitus okay will be showing this symptom called as dehydration and goes for frequent drinking of water because they feel more thirsty okay because they feel more thirsty so extreme thirst okay extreme thirst is also called as polydipsia okay extreme thirst is also called as polydipsia please remember this word okay polydipsia polydipsia so now as we said that the insulin deficiency failure of insulin okay cannot facilitate the movement of glucose into the cells okay what we said is that failure of insulin cannot facilitate the movement of glucose into the cells indirectly what does it mean in such cases in such cases cells will be starving for water glucose or other carbohydrates cells are not supplied with what glucose or other carbohydrates so here what you have to remember is that cells are not okay transported with what the glucose okay glucose or other carbohydrates okay other carbohydrates so these are not be there supplied to what these cells because it is under the control of what the insulin it is under the control of insulin cells are not provided with the glucose and other carbohydrates but every cell requires for the glucose why because we know that only three through the glucose what we say it is it is involved in what energy production okay it is responsible for what production of energy production of energy we all know that but now the cells are starving in lack of glucose and other carbohydrates why because from glucose or other carbohydrates only they produce energy when there is no energy then what will be the okay case of these cells okay what will be what will happen to these cells now these cells when they are not supplied with the glucose okay when they are not supplied with the glucose now these cells will depend upon the proteins that are there in the body okay they depend upon the proteins for what for producing energy for producing energy so when they start okay using the proteins to produce energy that particular person okay 
lead will be showing weakness or let us say it leads to weakness okay it leads to weakness so that's why those who are suffering with diabetes mellitus will be weak why they are weak because their cells are not supplied with the glucose why glucose is important because it is the main source of energy so failure of insulin okay cannot facilitate the supply or the movement of glucose to the cells so immediately the cells are depending upon the proteins and when they start using the proteins for deriving energy then the person will be very weak because they the cells should depend upon what glucose but here we are saying they are depending upon the proteins because the cells are not supplied with the glucose and at the same time even those cells will also depend upon the fats they also depend upon the fats so here what we have to remember is that degradation of fats will also produce what energy degradation of fats also produce energy this is all because of failure of insulin in the case of what diabetes mellitus so cells depends in the absence of cells in the absence of glucose depends upon the proteins to produce energy and that's why they are it leads to weakness cells in the absence of glucose will also depend upon the fats degradation of fats produces energy at the same time here very important thing is that with along with the energy during the degradation of fats during the degradation of fats along with energy it also produces the ketone bodies it also produces ketone bodies please remember this okay ketone bodies which we call it as ketosis okay ketosis we are calling it as okay ketosis please remember this ketosis so here you have to remember the word ketosis okay please remember the word ketosis okay ketosis so in the case of ketosis when we are using the word ketosis you have to remember that it, it is leading to the increase in acidic nature in the body okay and they are poisonous also plus they are poisonous okay they are poisonous okay this is very important again okay when we say that you have to remember that during the degradation of fats it is releasing the ketone bodies which we are calling it as ketosis and here it is acidic and poisonous acidic and poisonous and one more very important point is that in the case of a person who is suffering with diabetes mellitus the healing power of a boon okay healing power okay healing power of a boon okay is uh, reduced or let us say impaired okay impaired or reduced healing power is reduced any type of food it will be taking so long time prolonged time for its healing for its healing in a normal person the wound based upon the type of wound it will be healed everybody will have that inbuilt capacity to for healing of the wound but a person who is suffering with diabetes mellitus in that case or in that person healing power is reduced impaired okay healing power is reduced and there will be high levels of okay high levels of blood cholesterol okay high levels of blood cholesterol okay this is also another point that we have to keep in mind when we talk about the diabetes mellitus high levels of blood cholesterol can be seen in the per person who is suffering with diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus so how to treat this patient the simple thing is administration of insulin administration of insulin lowers the blood glucose levels which means they have to be supplied with the insulin injections okay administration of insulin lowers the blood glucose levels and that gives relief to the patient that gives relief to the patient so we have to remember administration of okay administration of insulin okay administration of insulin okay relieves okay relieves blood glucose levels or lowers let us say lowers blood glucose levels okay blood glucose levels please remember this 
Okay. When a person who is suffering with diabetes mellitus, compulsory they have to take what? Insulin. Okay. Insulin. By taking insulin, what happens? It lowers the blood glucose levels and it gives relief to the patient. Okay. So now let us understand the main differences between insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. And please remember, they will be commonly called as type 1 and type 2. So as soon as you come across the word type 1, you should remember that it is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. If you are coming across the word type 2, you should remember that it is non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. So here, what are the main differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus? If you are seeing here, the first one, type 1 can be seen in the people or in the person who is uh, just less than 20 years. So this can be seen the onset less than 20 years means people who are there less than 20 years can be seen that they are suffering with what or attacked with what type 1 diabetes. And whereas type 2 will be observed in the person who is above 30 years. Okay, this is seen in the person or in the people who are above 30 years. And type 1, if you see, they, the person may be having what? The normal weight. But in the case of type 2, they may be obese, little fat. Okay, when they are fat, there are chances that they are they will be suffering with what? Type 2 diabetes mellitus. And ketoacidosis is commonly type 1 diabetes mellitus. Okay, ketoacidosis means ketone bodies will be seen. Whereas ketoacidosis is very rare in type 2 diabetes. Okay, in type 2 diabetes. And there will be severe insulin deficiency in type 1. Okay, severe insulin deficiency in type 1. So you can understand why this is severe insulin deficiency because of the failure of what? Beta cells which are responsible for producing the insulin. So beta cells are failed so there is no insulin. So that's what we are saying here severe insulin deficiency. But whereas in type 2 we can observe that it is only relative insulin deficiency means very less in regard to insulin deficiency. And the last point is as we already said here beta cells depletion type 1 diabetes mellitus is caused because of what beta cells depletion whereas type 2 is uh, maybe because of mild beta cells depletion okay mild beta cells depletion so here are the main differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus so with this we have studied about one of the most important disease called as what diabetes mellitus which is a non communicable disease non communicable disease thank you so much